What was that? Holy cow. What a crazy, crazy sell-off in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell today. S&P, it was down 4%. You had the NASDAQ down 5%, and you had the Russell 2000 down 3.5%. And it was like watching today, it was, it was, it was kind of like watching the Bears stealing bases in the ninth inning with a 10-run lead. It was just like they like the 10 run lead wasn't enough. Like, we gotta go for more. And they they did it, they pulled it off. It's like they're trying to still manufacture runs despite having a pretty healthy lead. So it was tough. And look, I've done what I did a video on uh Saturday and I did another one uh yesterday, and I was talking about the potential for a market bounce here. And and uh it looked like, especially after yesterday, I was like, okay, we're getting that market bounce, and it made sense. We have been down six straight weeks. We hadn't seen but more than six weeks and like over 30, only twice within the last 30 years. So it wasn't really something that that um, I was just going off of a gut feel or anything like that. I try to stay away from gut feels. I really just try to follow the technical analysis on it. And uh, we were in extremely oversold conditions. Almost everything I was reading, completely oversold. And yet here we are. I mean, we haven't put in new low, lower lows yet. And so there's a potential that it could reverse tomorrow. And we put in a lower high. I personally... I'm not overly optimistic about that here. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. But at the end of the day today, I had two long positions. I had QQQ and I had IW. I'm both trying to profit off of the bounce. After yesterday, we're both solid in the green. And uh, I was feeling pretty good about them. And I was actually anticipating today and, and quite excited about it. And uh, anything but that. I mean, I thought even at the open, I was like, I would not be surprised for us to quickly wipe away these losses in the first, you know, 10 minutes of trading. But it sold and it sold and it sold. And I was like, okay, are we going to get a little bit of a bounce here or no? Are we not getting anything? Nothing. And so, yeah, you have the staple steady. And usually they're never the ones that are leading the market higher or lower. But in this case, they were destroying the market today. You had Costco's. I mean, first of all, you had Target. I mean, they were like down 27, 28% on the day. Then you had Walmart's earnings from yesterday still hampering the market. Then on top of that, you have um, you have Costco and you have Dollar Tree and you have Ulta just getting crushed. And these are stocks that don't really move with a lot of aggression. So seeing Walmart down, you know, 20 something, 25 percent or something off of the April highs and and some of these other stocks like Costco, it was just trading at all time highs back in um, April. And now we're almost like a 30 percent off of those highs. So there's a lot of pressure on these stocks and it's finally starting to give way on the stock market as a whole. So, so for today's video, we're going to talk about the stable stocks. We're going to go over the market indices as well. And then I'm going to be taking your questions. I'm going to take your charts and I'm going to be looking at all of them and, and telling you what I think from a technical standpoint on each of those. These are tough, tough times. And uh, I've only made three trades this month. All three of them have been bad so far. I mean, and I, I say bad and it doesn't necessarily mean they were bad trades. They, they finished... In, in the red column, they were a bad trade in that regard. But in terms of being undisciplined or anything else, no. I mean, I followed my trading plan and that's what the stop losses are for. So when I get stopped out or when I get out of a trade and I'm following my plan, I'm not upset about it because I know that, okay, IWM and QQQ today, for instance, I took a 2.7% loss on each of those. But I also know too that it doesn't take much for me to be able to profit off of this market. So I get a good, good run and I make seven or 8% on a trade. I just made up for three losing trades right there just because not so much how, how powerful a winning trade is, but how p powerful it is for your portfolio when you're managing the risk and keeping those, those stops tight. So that's the biggest thing right there. And a uh, big thank you to Chris for being a new member here. All right. Thank you for joining. So big, big, big moves out of these, out of this market today. And it's uh it can leave a lot of people, you know, worried and wanting to hit the panic cell and, and get out completely. I also been talking about too, how important it is to keep your position sizes or the number of positions that you're trading small, keep more cash than, 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 um, in your portfolio than you normally would. Like right now I'm hundred percent cash. Now, after I got stopped out of two trades, I mean, I was about 70, 80% cash before that. Now I'm I'm hundred percent cash. So even when I'm losing, I'm not losing by much because even though I want to be able to have 100% of my capital at work, I need the right market conditions in order to do that. And if the market's not giving me the right con conditions, I'm going to keep playing it, playing it small. 
It's only when the market allows me to add more positions that I will. So right now, taking a couple of licks uh, over the last couple of days, but, but overall, uh, I'm still doing well. I'm, I'm green on the year and I've been managing my risk and staying disciplined. And I couldn't ask for a better start to the year considering these overall market conditions that we're dealing with. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at some of these charts. So SPY, and I left my drawings up from last week with a little few minor tweaks that I've made since then. But so what was interesting about the SPY before is that this was kind of the, the channel that we were following. And then we were like, oh crap, it, it, it broke the channel, right? Because we saw this as these parallel channels that were looking really sharp. But then it broke below it and then it bounced last Thursday and you're thinking, okay, is there, is there something that we need to adjust on the technical analysis side of it? And there was, there's definitely a declining support level going all the way back to, to January where we consistently bounce off of it. Now I thought we would get that, that nice 33, uh, 32 point, or what was it? 30, 38.2% retracement to 50% retracement here in the, the next few days. But that's definitely in question with the big, massive 4% sell-off on the S&P 500. So um, we're looking at perhaps a retest of this level here at about 385. Could easily see us testing that tomorrow. It wouldn't take much, like 1.5%. So if we test it, do we break above it? The other thing that would be a little bit discouraging, I think, from a bullish standpoint would be, uh, or at least a dead cap bounce standpoint, would be if we break this trend line that connects a lot of the previous highs, if we break that trend line and we continue to keep selling lower because after that, there's not a lot of support underneath. You could make a case for about three, 338.20 right around here. That could be, that could be uh, actually it's about, I would say, yeah, probably about 350 right in line with that um, fifth, uh, 200 week moving average. But that's not even that strong of a moving uh, support level. I would say it sets up for the ultimate move down to three 300 or so. So that would be big. That would be a huge move to the downside. And we definitely don't want that. And don't forget, pound the like button to this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate when you guys do that. It supports the channel and uh, allows me to keep doing these uh, live streams for you guys and market videos throughout the week. So don't forget to do that here. And Start posting in the comments. What, what, uh, whether you're looking, watching it on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or whatever, start posting uh, what you would like for me to look at during this broadcast, and I'll be sure to take, take a look at them all. So, so these are these are really the parameters that we're dealing with the S and P 500. We talked about the Fibonacci retracements in last night's video. Check this out. Nowhere near, and this is again, this is a weekly chart. So let's tighten that line up a little bit there. But we got to about probably like 28, 29% on the retracement. And then we just completely fell apart today. So we're not even anywhere near the, what we would typically see in a bear market. And in a bear market, you're usually seeing retracements back up to the to the six, 50 to 61.8% retracement levels. And that's definitely not come anywhere close to it. I mean, we would be at 423 right now if we had a 50% retracement level. And so, uh, and there you have it. I mean, we're, we're still seeing a little bit of selling as well in the after hours here. Uh, Swipe 650 is bringing that one up, um, mentioning that as well. Let's look at quick look at the post-market selling. Yeah, I mean, it still hasn't sold off yet. And so the other thing too, um, I actually got out of both positions before they hit my stop loss. And why did I do that? Well, IWM came within like pennies of hit getting stopped out. And uh, the main reason for me wanting to get out is because I didn't want to risk. We were, I was too close to my stop losses to be able to risk that gap lower. And sometimes you just have to do that because we're seeing these big overnight moves like what we saw last night. If you wake up to like a three or 4% sell off the next morning, that really messes up that whole trade for you. So really trying to manage that risk got out a little bit early by, by uh, not waiting for the stop loss to get taken out, especially considering how close it got to the stop loss intraday. So back to SPY, Fibonacci retracements. Maybe we get the, here's the other possibility too for these FIBs. Let's say we go all the way down to 375. We could then bounce thereafter. And then it sets up a whole other new uh, price level for the retracements. But on the weekly chart, and we went red again today on the weekly. So we got seven straight weeks of 
nonstop declines on the weekly chart. That just really doesn't happen. I can, I can show you, I mean, going back in time where we've had some of those at before, I mean, right here in 2007 or 2011, I mean, we had eight weeks right here and you can see not, it was a, it was a hefty decline, but it wasn't a massive decline right here on the, where am I at? Right there. Left side of your screen, eight weeks of declines right there. And then in 2008, you had a similar sell-off, pretty steep sell-off too, right in this area here. So six weeks of selling there. So we're going even beyond what we saw in 2008. And then you have to go back to like 2001 for us to where we got, got into some really heavy, heavy selling on a week to week basis. So that's, that was a mouthful on spy. A couple of the other things that I want to look at, um, IWM, small caps, they actually held up the best today. And typically when you're seeing massive sellers, for some reason, uh, when the, when the tech's getting hit a lot worse than, than, than the, the, the S and P 500, you'll often see some relative strength in the Russell 2000. So we got that here, but you got this massive support level that goes back to 2018. We bounced off of it last week, but that that's could be back in play here before the end of the week. If we get continued selling uh, through the Thursday and Friday. And I'm seeing your questions here, so uh, keep posting them, and I will get to them. I'm just trying to cover some of the main things to give you a brief overview on this market here in the early going, and then I'm going to get to your questions. So IWM, VIX, we've talked about this support level or resistance level in the past. We're making a move back for it again. Very possible if we see it further selling tomorrow, we're going to be right back up at that resistance level there. That plays a very strong bounce that that's been been a very strong bounce area for equities not so much for the vix so it, it would reject price on the vix but for equities equities tend to bounce when we start getting up into this resistance level right here so right now it's like 3465 if we get there there's a good chance that the market might see some short covering that that happens thereafter and let's look at xlp because remember xlp has been one of the strongest sectors this entire year. And ultimately when you're in these bear markets, almost every time, yes, you'll have like the staples and the utilities, they'll show some strength in the early going, but ultimately it takes down everything. And that's what you're seeing here with staples right now. Staples, it was like what? April 21st, staples XLP was hitting all time highs, right? Now look where we're at. We go from 80 something dollars, $81 a share, all the way down to 71. Since April 21st, huge move. Staples is one of the most docile sectors there are. But now it's trading at 71. And even more so, look at look at this trend line here. Breaking that long-term trend line on staples. So that's that's an ugly sight right there for the staples that have been that has been so good and so consistent at bouncing off of this uh, rising trend line here that now it's actually broken it. Some of the companies inside of staples, like Costco's. You got a long-term trim line here. What are we looking at here? A possible move down to 380? It, it's, it's possible. So that's where I would be looking at Costco at this point. And prior to prior to today, I mean, there was there was a chance that we were actually trying to bounce off of a major support level. Instead, it gaps down below the support level and completely just wipes out a ton of longs. So there's Costco. You also had double WMT Walmart. And this is, you just never see this kind of stuff. Yesterday was the biggest move that it has had since 1987. The next day, it was the Black uh, Monday sell where I think equities lost like 23%. This, the S&P 500 did. So we're getting into some massive, massive moves. And Walmart, Walmart, you're lucky if you can get a 1% move out of that on a given trading day. And here we are, over like 12% yesterday, almost 7% again today. So big big moves. Where's the support for Walmart lie? I mean, it's crushed that support level right there. So it broke below that. So the next level of support, do we have a rising trend line here that we can count on? Doesn't look like it. In fact, I'd probably say that's your rising trend line right there. Okay. We broke that rising trend line today. So there's not a lot of good support left for the stock. Maybe at 117. Maybe we bounce there. So a lot of problems there. That's your Walmart chart. Then you got DLTR. 
this one actually probably sets up the best from a from a bounce standpoint just because it tested a major support level today after selling off significantly like 16 percent at one point and then it holds the 200 day moving average and then it tries to bounce so it's holding this support level do, do i want to buy it at this level no no definitely not not when you're seeing the actual sector itself breaking down as well just starting to break down with that trend line break in xlp i want to hold off because i want the sectors i want the market and i want the stocks to all be lining up when i'm getting into an individual play and then we got ulta this one this is a little bit more of a volatile play within the uh retail sector but um, nonetheless, one that just took an absolute beating today, trying to hold on to the support level, but this is a very precarious situation there. Held it into the close, but could, you know, something to watch going into tomorrow. If that can't hold, start looking at like the lows from January. Does that, does that hold, or is it, you know, does it hold the, the area? It's not a very strong support level, but, um, it's definitely one worth watching. So I think. I've covered the ones that I wanted to cover. Did I cover Target? No, I did not. That's the big one, right? That's the big, that's the grand salami of them all today. But uh, another another major rising trend line that could get tested. So maybe it goes all the way down to 141. And that's what I'm looking at. What are we seeing here? Right now, we're seeing a lot of froth getting taken out of the markets, right? You're seeing, let me go back to the charts. You're seeing a lot of froth. I mean, this is a lot of froth coming from 2020 when the Fed was just printing money like it was a religion to them when you had government spending just going through the roost 2020 2021 end of 2022 this is where the roosters coming home to roost here the market's taking this froth out of the market like this is all froth here this here all froth you take anything like square guys yeah, square was like a normal trending stock for the most part then it goes ape right this is froth all this froth getting taken completely out of the market. It's rebalancing itself. It's like, this is not sustainable. So I'm going a little bit on a tangent there. I hate the Federal Reserve, if you haven't noticed yet. I mean, I despise them. I think they're, they're a cancer to the economic system. They do so much more bad than good. Every, every recession that we have had you know, in, in modern history, you could tie it back to the Fed and reckless policy, yet nobody calls them out for it. They just get allotted for, hey, you guys are amazing. What do you guys think might happen? What are you going to do? Well, we're going to screw it up some more. That's what they're they're really going to tell you, what they should to be telling you. All right. Talk about the VIX. We talked about the staples. We talked about the indices. Talked about some trades that I didn't like. Let's get into your stuff here. First question, and let me scoop my head up here. Do you use a rough rule of thumb for setting your stop losses or past analysis? So when it comes to my stop losses, I'm looking for key support levels. I don't want to just say, oh, I don't want to lose more 3% on the trade. I want to know that if I get out of the trade, it's breaking a key support level, and I don't want to be in that trade anymore. So like Target, for instance, right? You can get rid of this froth box here. That's a that's a new slaying I just came up with on the fly. Uh, so target, there's really no support levels. I want to be buying as near a support level that will define whether or not I'm going to be right or wrong on the trade as possible. So target, I can buy right here. Yes, it's oversold, but is there a key support level nearby? No. I mean, the key support level would be this rising trend line. So if I was going to buy it, it would be off of this rising trend line at 141. And I would wait to see if it is it going to bounce first because I don't have to be in right at the bottom. I'll let somebody else try to try to be, you know, breaking through the line first. Let it bounce a little bit. If it can bounce a little bit, maybe it gets up to like 145 or so, right? And then what I'm going to end up doing is putting my stop loss below the rising trend line. If it breaks below the rising trend line, then I know it doesn't want to hold the rising trend line. So also, what am I drinking today? Because usually I always have a little bit of bourbon here for these videos. I haven't had any, haven't drinking any of it yet, but I'm drinking <laughs> Black Eagle bourbon whiskey. This stuff just sits on the shelf, never gets drunk, drinking, drinking, drinking. It doesn't ever get poured. I'm just going to say that. I'm pouring it for myself because it was such a crappy trading session that the bounce didn't work. And, and you know, I feel a little foolish for putting the videos out at times when I'm saying, hey, you know, expect a market bounce and the market completely capitulates. But 
that's the thing. Like I can give you guys my opinion. I can give you my analysis, but I'm also going to tell you is like, if it doesn't work, this is, this is what I would be doing. And that's what I'm using these live streams here for today. Bounce didn't work. I got out of my, my long positions and you've got to manage the risk. That's why we can say what we want. And I think uh, somebody said it really eloquently uh, up here. Oh, KB. This is KB. On it. This might be the comment of the day. Got excited for the bear market rally after the video yesterday. Today was a good reality check that the markets will do what it will do. Hope everyone had tight stops. Exactly. I, that that makes me actually feel good to, to realize that the people understand that we can pontificate and we can say, this is what the market's going to do. This is what I, you know, and, and everything else. And you've got a lot of blowhards that act like they have a crystal crystal ball when they're making these predictions. But in the end, the market's going to do whatever the heck it wants. And so if it doesn't align with what we expect it to do, and we're looking at the technicals and say, okay, it's setting up for a bounce. And then it doesn't bounce like what we got today. Then you've got to have a stop loss in place. Stop losses are there for when your theories are wrong, for when your trade setups are not right. And so the stop losses prevent your, your wrong analysis from being really, really wrong, like Costco or Target or uh, some of these other trades that I just completely fell apart. That's why I'm like, don't ever trade through earnings because yes, you could be right. But if you're wrong and you're like wrong, like Target, who would ever thought Target would trade off, sell off 27%? But they do. From time to time, you will get wiped out on if you keep playing the earnings. So that's why I'm drinking Black Eagle. One, it's a sucky bourbon. Two, I've had this jar. I usually just pour it for people I don't like. <laughs> And uh, but today it's like I think I deserve Black Eagle, man. I, I get the Black Eagle treatment because it does stink. But what what am I gonna do? Can't be sipping on Blanton's on a day like today. All right, Cisco missed here, right? I, I haven't looked at the report or anything like that, but yeah, after hours, that's a that's ugly. Holy shnikes. So another one, sixteen percent. What was it down intraday? Because I don't really track this stock too much. Regular hours is down 4%. Cisco, down 12% post earnings. Like, how often do you see that? And so, what are we looking at here? Well, who knows what tomorrow looks like, but I mean, it broke that rising trend line going back to the March 2020 lows. Of course, tomorrow, again, tomorrow could look completely different. I don't know if they've had their teleconference or anything yet, but I mean, they could say something and it gets analysts all excited and it reverses the losses. But for right now, breaking that rising trend line. All right, Chris. Chris Colbert. Did I say that right? I've been trying TSM. I also have some in GRVY gravy, huh? I'd be curious to see a chart review on that one as well. Okay, so let's look at TSM first. This is your Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, double top. All right, this is the one that, this one kind of scares me a little bit. So you've got a double top here. Let me draw another one. There you go. Double top. It confirmed the double top, right? Confirms the double top and it tries to bounce back, tries to recapture that, that resistance level, almost does for a day. And then it completely sells off and it's been in a downtrend ever since. So really what I'm looking for, okay, check this out. We have a declining trend line going back to the March highs. Can it break that rising trend line? Almost looked like it would yesterday. But then today it didn't. That's why I don't want to get into a stock right right below a resistance level because when you do, you're you're really risking the fact that you're going to get one of these candles that this trend is just going to continue because until this breaks, there's a declining trend line in place. So I would rather wait now. And I actually like how it sets up better going forward because if we do get a bounce here, check this out. You, you break this and then you place the stop loss below this candle and you have a pretty tight reward to risk ratio that... If you can get in at, let's say, like 93.62 and you put your stop loss below 90.04, so let's say 89.98, then you have about, okay, three and a half, three and a half dollars to play with from a stop loss standpoint. But if it goes all the way back up to this resistance level again, holy cow, that would be really nice. That, that would be the reward on the trade. That would be like seven, fifteen dollars So I had to do that math on the fly. I'm always afraid that I'm going to make a stupid math error when I try to do that on these live streams. But $15 to the upside, $3.5 to the downside. So that, that's what I like there. But 
with this overarching double top pattern, I mean, it's better to wait for it to show you that it wants to try to change its direction going forward. GRVY. Holy cow, I should have turned down the AC before I started this live stream. I have it at 75 and I am burning up in here right now. But gravy. Oh, I call it great. I've actually never traded this one before. It doesn't even look like I've charted it at all. No. So gravity is what it's called, huh? I saw a GRVY. I thought maybe it's groovy. Maybe it's gravy, but it's gravity. It's kind of like the world of the day, huh? Yeah. So this is another one. It looks like it has a pretty well-defined downtrend in place. Some people say, oh, maybe you should draw it you know, from the very top there. I'm trying to find where it seems like it's the most consistent at. And you can even maybe say it's consistent right here. You have a double bottom trying to form. I don't even know what these guys do. But um, I'm like having the uh, Mark Minervin or whatever that dude's name is moment on uh, – was it CNBC when he was asked pumping up UPST and he's like, when they asked him, what does it do? He's like, Oh, I think there's an audio. problem. <laughs> oh, we got just, just look it up on YouTube. It's absolutely hysterical. Anyways, there's actually a little bit of a setup here. So, um, Chris, I mean, you're putting some uh, interesting charts out here for us to check out uh, GRVI being one of them and TSM being the other. I'm going to add both of those to my watch list going forward. Um, they, they definitely catch your eye. So GRVY, and I'm, I think I'm going to stick. So originally I was saying, well, maybe this is your rising trend line right here, right? But it only looks like it only crosses like two points. But if you go back to the highs here, it looks a little bit more, looks a little more sticky there. You got this point here, and then you got a little bit of an area here where it consolidated just below before it tried to actually break out. So you got this double bottom. And then it looks like it's trying to play with whether or not it wants to break out. So you've had a head fake here today, right? Actually, three days in a row, four days in a row, it's it's head fake. So what, what I would probably be doing on this trade is trying to wait for it to clear all of this head fake area here before considering a long position. The other thing, too, is it probably behooves anybody. They're trying to get into a long position. Have the S&P 500 trading in your direction as well. So, with those two trade setups, thank you for providing some good. Uh, yeah. there. Vince, Vince mentions the reverse money printer. We have got a reverse money printer going on here, guys. In fact, they haven't even started tapering yet. They're, I think they just randomly chose June 1st to start tapering. They, they admitted so. And uh, so, it hasn't even actually started yet. And so, that's going to be fun. Good buy area for Tesla. Ugh. This one, I've, I've been marking up this one a lot lately. So rising trend line going back to March, that one's over with, right? So let's go ahead and take that one off, off of here. Then you have this support level here. That one broke. Now, maybe there's like a support level here, right? You, it's possible. Hard to say, though, but we're sitting right on that support level. So can it bounce? And if it shows signs of bouncing, is it worth buying? Yeah, I, I think it could be worth buying. As long as you're seeing the bounce out of the market, which we haven't seen uh, after today's putrid sell-off. So I would wait for the market to try and turn around a little bit before saying, hey, let's jump right back into Tesla. You also have headwinds, too, with all this stuff with uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter and everything. That's weighing on Tesla as well. So from a swing trading standpoint, you could get caught up into like a news cycle that just penalizes Tesla for what's going on with, with Twitter right now. Uh, Black Eagle is awful. So if this level holds, and I think this would probably be the, the best area to try to play the bounce at if it gets down to it, would be the $600 level, right? 594 and 595. If it gets down, oh, that, that Black Eagle is really bad. Just drink water next time, I guess. Five, 592, 593 area. That could be your next level of support. Tesla really needs to hold on to that support level. I we were talking about froth there earlier. I mean, this is this is more about like that froth that we were talking about. I mean, look at this 
this is what the market's trying to take. I'm not saying that Tesla's going to give all of this back, but there's a lot of stocks with that kind of froth to it. And a lot of them have given it back. We talked about SQ. Look at PayPal. They've done the same thing. All this froth is getting taken out of the market because the same thing that's taking it out, uh, it's the opposite. Well, quantitative easing is what put it into the market. Quantitative tapering is what's going to take it out. So I get a lot of angry people when I talk talk reality about some of these stocks. Tesla being one of them. Other ones, SoFi, um, GameStop, AMC. I mean, like death threat crazy. Support level here, 600. Uh, that that's what I would ultimately want to target. But if it can if it can muster something right here in the near term, that you know that that might be worth playing. But it needs to break. It probably is going to need to break this declining trend line. I don't know by the by that time. See if if you try to play it before it breaks this declining trend line, you risk what we were talking about in some of those other stocks where it goes right up to it and then it sells back off again. All right. TLT. This one had some action today, huh? So we had this long-term trend line. Pull up the weekly on this joker. Long-term trend line here. Broke that one. What was it? Last week it broke it. And then it sets up for a new move back down to this rising trend line that goes all the way back to 07. So this could be a nice little pop in the next few days but ultimately i think it's going to come back down and test this 106 especially with uh the quantitative tapering that's going on that could that could definitely lead uh to lower prices in tlt i actually did the kb kb says <laughs> um Empty Fetcher. I think there's one on there. It says end the Fed on there on, on the YouTube channel. I hate the Fed. Which company do you like best for long-term growth? Right now, it's, it's really let's see where the chips fall because some of them may just get unfairly penalized uh, from this market madness. And, and then they just create an incredible value. But right now, I'm not really buying anything. Um, some of the stocks actually, I don't know, I had them written down, but some of the stocks that were starting to intrigue me a little bit, but not necessarily something that I want to go off um, buying big loads of Disney. Um, that one's one that's been getting just beat into pieces, right? Um, Spotify. I mean, look at that one, right? But again, they can be bad right now, but they can get really, really bad in the, in the, in the coming months if this market continues to selling. So ultimately I'm a bear on this market, you know, throughout this year until we start seeing, you know, some exhaustion in the market and, and while we will have dead cat bounces along the way, and I was kind of really expecting one here in the near term, it doesn't doesn't mean that um, just because we get a dead cat bounce that the market selling is over. So I kind of expect us to ultimately finish much lower on the year and maybe into next year. And then that's where I really want to be starting to pounce on it when we're hitting these major extremes in the market. So Spotify is one, uh, even Shopify too. I mean, I think that's one that could ultimately play, pay some dividends. Tesla could be one, but it needs to come down a lot further for me to buy it. Looking at PLTR last night on the one hour chart, it broke $8 today. I'm thinking 785 could be support. Just your insight. Plus, do you trade on lower time frames like the 15 and five minutes? I watched the uh, time frames th throughout the day, all day long, like the five minutes on um, the S&P. I'll also look at uh, it's mainly like the, the five minute, the 30 minute and the hour. And sometimes I'll base trades off, I'll base my entries off of them, but I won't necessarily make, you know, trading decisions about whether or not a stock's bullish or bearish based off of what it's doing in the five minute. It's more or less timing, timing the entry. But uh, PLTR, let's look at it from an hourly standpoint anyways. First, actually, let's look at it from a daily. <coughs> so you got this this downtrend in place here. So, so if you get a good rally out of it, let's say it starts a rally from 796, then you got immediate resistance right here in the, the, the 10 area. So in the mid tens, that's where it's going to start running into it. But with that being said, I mean, 10, 10 50 from $8, that's, that's more than 25% of a, of a profit that can be made in, in the process, but it's trying to get into this gap, but it can't really sustain this momentum that we saw from last week. So from here, Okay, if I was to get back into it, maybe it breaks above this these highs here. You have a nice little plane of highs. 
So if we can get back above this like 841 level, I try to try to push it back up to the 1080 um, with a stop loss below the, the most recent lows, which would be today's lows. These are volatile plays, though. So um, go into it with that mindset and support levels. There, a support level that that exists doesn't necessarily mean it has to hold price. It essentially is going to either break it or hold it. And people feel like technical analysis doesn't work when support level breaks. Well, it's the exact opposite. It is working. It's giving you guidance. It's like, hey, something's wrong here. Key support level broke. You know, conduct yourself accordingly. Tobias, BA. A bear flag going on there, right? Making sure I was in the daily chart still. Um, bear flag. Man, just when you thought BA couldn't get uglier. What I'm trying to do here is just try to get a feel for where the support might exist on this stock. You seem to have some support going across there all the way down into the 70s, mid-70s. That would be a massive drop from here. Um, that's a long-term outlook. That's going all the way back to 2014. But you do have this bear flag pattern. And, I mean, there's not a lot of support underneath this thing. So the three support levels that I would probably say going forward with this bear flag here, confirms would probably be this minor support level at 113 and then another one at 9103. I mean, there is not a lot there. And it uh, it's really scary because, I mean, it's still putting in lower lows and lower highs. This could have actually set up if it could have broken out of it today and we could have got that continuation to the upside on the S&P 500. It could have, could have made for a nice little balance play. But today changed a lot of stuff, man. Oh, no problem, Dan. What do I think about the quantitative tapering starting in June and the impact to the overall markets? I mean, I think the market is uh, doing its best to try to price everything in. I think people think that the market prices in things a lot faster than it than they they it doesn't price it in, price it in as fast as they realize it. Um, it. I think it's a lot slower, and I think there's still a lot of headwinds in this market. So for me, I don't know where the bottom is on the market, and I'll never try to tell you, hey, this is a bottom in the market. What I will tell you is like, okay, we're getting into some oversold conditions. Maybe there's an opportunity for a bounce play here. This is the reasons why. If it doesn't work, you use stop losses, right? But I think the tapering, uh, I think I think this is going to be an ongoing story throughout the year. And uh, I mean, this has already been a lot longer sell-off than what we saw in 2018 and 2020. And those, I mean, 2020 was like, what, like five weeks that it lasted? And then 2018 was uh, three months. So now we're getting into the realm of, okay, this is feeling more like a 2008 kind of sell-off or a 2000 sell-off. What's well, for tomorrow, man? I don't know. I mean, I could, I could see, honestly, I could see myself, you know, I told, I said, mentioned earlier, I got out of IWM and in QQQ because I just wasn't willing to risk the overnight gap downs, which started starting to look more and more uh, uh, like a regular thing in this market. I'm not willing to, to risk that when my stop losses were so close. Um, what could happen tomorrow is anybody's guess, man. Nobody really knows. I think I think we are due for a dead cat bounce here in the very near future. And I would like a, a shot at playing that to, to to a certain extent, maybe be able to peel off, you know, five or ten percent off of the five to ten percent off of the market move. But it's it's a hard, hard place to to, to predict what when and where it's gonna happen. Looked like it was already happening yesterday, and, and this is what we got today. Solar Edge looks to have support it. 215. I'm trying to buy limits and have a stop at 195. Do you think that it's showing strength with how it's handled this bear market? Let's look at it. I don't even know what the... There we go. SEDG. Oh, I remember this one. Sometimes I know the symbol and not the name. Uh, so yeah, there's some... It definitely feels like there's some support here going back to November of 2020. That that That's encouraging, right? So needs to hold that. 215. I mean, that I mean, this is gonna be a much, much more volatile stock than most of them. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's a anything in the green or even slightly in the red today after the carnage that we saw, that that's impressive. So you also have this declining trend line that looks to be a little bit on the, you know, pretty solid downtrend going back to the April, beginning of April. You can see, I mean, it's been rejected two other times and kind of was rejected again today. 
Um, in fact, I could probably tighten this thing up a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was basically rejected there today. So I'd be very nervous about it, actually. Um, not that it's not doing well, considering the overall market conditions over the past uh, few weeks, but it really needs to break that declining trend line first. But good, good uh, stock. I'll actually well, add it to my watch list there. Richard's looking for a bounce tomorrow. Let's see. There we go. Camping World Holdings here. I'm trying to remember the symbol on that. CWH, that's right. First of all, who wants to buy a camper, right, when you got gas over $5 a gallon? I mean, here in Florida, it's even over 4 now. It's like four fifty. dollars um, but you could be setting up for a head and shoulders pattern here, left shoulder, head, and then you got a right shoulder that's trying to form. And usually the right shoulder is a little bit more dilapidated and not as big as the left shoulder. So if that's the extent of the right shoulder, wouldn't be surprising at all. But there's not a lot of support underneath, so it could go down. Uh, if it breaks this 24 mark, it could go all the way down to maybe 1680 or so before it finds any legit support. So, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, short term, in the very short term. I mean, it's nice consolidation, but it didn't hold up very well today. And this is a much more volatile auto company than a lot of them. So you got to be very careful there. Okay, MU. We got here. We got that double bottom. I've been been watching this one for a while. You got to you got a double top and a double bottom, right? So here's your long term double top, first top right here then you got your second top right here and then you got this firm support level and it keeps bouncing off of it it won't confirm the pattern and then you got you got this double um double bottom plane it actually looked like it broke out of it yesterday a lot of the semiconductors were looking really really good yesterday and then you have today's you know clown show um of course i wouldn't be calling it a clown show if i was short <laughs> But yeah, you got the double bottom here. Try to confirm. So you basically had a head fake and then it completely fell apart. I would probably say, okay, if, it, if the market does want to bounce and it wants to get back above the support level, it needs to cl clear that that Tuesday high there before I would be willing to get into it. Um, also, what would be better, even better, is if it can consolidate some underneath this uh, breakout level before actually breaking out so that you can tighten up the stop loss and use a better stop. Because right there, you know, using a stop loss at 70 and getting long. Well, that's actually not too bad. 74. So you're talking about like five and a half percent. So yeah, I, I think that's actually still a valid trade setup. I was thinking it was going to be like 10% or 12%. Getting killed on Amazon. Okay. Oh, I got to do DFS first though. You hear that? I don't know if you can hear that or not. I guess I got a calendar notice. Always something on these live streams that pop up, man. You can't. There we go. Sounds like something from the Hunger Games. Maybe you guys didn't hear. It was just a uh, Alexa telling me that I had a calendar meeting that I'm not going to. All right. Finding channel here on DFS. Not the worst chart to, to have seen so far this year. I mean, right? Doing pretty good, but you look at a lot of the other credit card pairs. They're they're really more in a chop than they're in a decline. Like uh, Mastercard, you got Visa. A lot of chop, a lot of chop since the beginning of the year. So DFS probably looking a little bit better than even those from a long term perspective. You could even say maybe from a long term perspective. What is that to you? Bull flag. So can it bounce off of this pattern? And, and start to move up to this like 125 level. So DFS is another one that I would add to my watch list. I like it. I think if it can break back above that 108 level, and then you can put a stop loss below today's lows, that maybe like, you know, 10, I don't know, what was the lows of today? 104, so maybe like 103.98, then um, pretty decent reward to risk ratio there. Because I mean, if it can get up to one, even if it gets up to 120 right here, still, still a good trade. Thank you. Um, yeah, about that one. KB, thank you for that one. All right, now let's get to Amazon. 
Yeah, the, Amazon's bad. Looking at some of my other charts that I've drawn on it. Um, this support level here is pretty good. It's it, it's held up at least so far, but now it looks like we're getting ready to, to try that support level one more time. And maybe that's maybe that's what we end up getting here with like the broader indices and with some of these big tech stocks is we get a retest of the lows and then you get that dead cat bounce rally. That's to happen. I would love to see that happen like tomorrow, bounce off of it and start to shoot back up again. Um, that would be an idea. But remember, though, I mean, I'm not trying to play this thing, go back to the all time highs. I want to be aggressive with my profit taking. And uh, I was up 2.3 percent on the queues yesterday. I didn't feel like it was enough to start booking gains on hindsight. It was. But at the time, it wasn't. So, yeah, Amazon, watch this uh, support level here going forward. It breaks that. There's not a lot of support underneath it until it gets like down into the 1600s. So some of these companies are really coming up to, on the precipice of, you know, very problematic situation. Chris clarified from earlier, Gravity is a gaming company. Cool. They are. Could, could be a worse chart, man. I mean, this thing's had actually a really good year going from like 18 all the way up to 34. It's almost a double. That's a, that's a rarity in this market. But uh, the energy play. So what else do you expect? Those energy plays have done really good so far in the year. But now what do you got? You got a head and shoulders pattern to keep an eye on. So left shoulder, head, right shoulder. People used to uh, hate on those head and shoulders patterns and saying they never work or whatever. They were always bouncing off the necklines. But man, there's a lot of head and shoulders patterns out there right now that have been confirming throughout this year. So they are worth paying close attention to if it breaks. This is a volatile, this is a volatile uh, trade here. So you could see a break that, you know, from 30, where's the next level of support at 24, maybe 22. So um, stop losses are going to be key on this one. If you're sitting on a lot of profits, you don't want them to get away from you too quickly. So far. So far. Jeez, that's like I actually went up today. Go figure that one, huh? Six straight days. That thing's been up six straight days. I'm always, I've been kind of knocking on it a little bit just because I, every time I say something about it, man, like the, the legions of SoFi uh, traders like come after me like hardcore. But uh, I think there's some lines I can go ahead and delete on this one. This is, this decline in trend line is really what you want to be watching right now. Um, it's tested multiple times, keeps on getting rejected by price. If it can break above it, yeah, there might be room to run here. So maybe like, 735 it could run i mean it's a potential the other thing you got to contend with is this 50 day moving average because it does have a history with it where it keeps rejecting price right at it so it might be better to wait for it to break above um the 50 day moving average for a uh, long entry Let's see what do i think about crm so this is another one that, you know, this is a stock that's on the Dow. Um, so it's not a fly by night company at all, but I mean, it's been getting hammered. I mean, at one point it was trading at 311. Now it's trading at 156. Uh, I bet you doubt people on the Dow board or whoever decides what goes on to the Dow. Probably wishing they had some more uh, industrial plays rather than some tech plays because those are the ones that are getting hit the worst. But yeah, long term trend line. Uh, actually, let's go back to my scratch board here. Long-term trend line in place. For me, see what happens. I mean, it's worth waiting at this point. I mean, if it can get down to 148 and start to bounce, it might make for a good uh, bounce opportunity. I, I continue to watch it. It's on my must-watch list, so I'm always looking at this chart. But, um, I mean, horrible sell-off for it. Maybe there's a shred of hope for it at 148, 149. We'll see. And that was from Joe Troka, hopefully I said that name right. I always get nervous when I see like the little squiggly lines. I know there's a name for that too, and I just don't know what it is. Um, IWM filled a couple of gaps, huh? Yeah, I don't know what gaps gaps you're referring to. I, I don't question that they're on there, but um, maybe it's these here. Is this a gap? No. I'm not sure what the gaps are, but... Uh, but I think, well, I mean, you got a gap right here, but it's a very small one. But yeah, I mean, the, we were talking about it on Amazon. Maybe maybe what we're seeing here is we're going to see a retest of support. Like this would be a major re, re, uh, 
retest the support at like 168 if it can hold it and then start that bounce that could be a, a good opportunity there Benny Genius Sports Limited Okay, so yeah, decline in trend line there. For that one, I would say just, you know, the, the big key there is uh, no reason to be long on it until it can break above, you know, this this declining trend line. And then you, again, especially like these $3 stocks and stuff. I mean, it did good today. I mean, it was up 4%. That's, I mean, I'd take that over any of my trades. But what you really want to make sure of is that, you know, the market's aligning with these long opportunities as well. LCID. Let's see here. Yeah, huge support level going all the way across. I mean, this goes back to what, April of last year. Um, and it keeps flirting with it. I mean, it wasn't the worst day for it, considering what, you know, you had the NASDAQ down 5%, Lucid's only down 2%. Um, Tesla, I mean, look at Tesla, it was down 7%. So did even better than that. But it's in a it's in a consistent downtrend right now. So it well say that and actually pushed out of it the last couple of days. But um, but it needs to get back above this resistance. It's sitting right on it. So maybe if it can get above like 18, 1854, 1855, if it can get above that level there, it gets back above the 20 day moving average, which it has a little bit of history with there with that green line. Then you have maybe a, an opportunity there for it to make a, a good run. But in this market, I, I really, and I, I'm wrong about a lot of things. I could be wrong about it, you know, on this as well. I do think that there's a lot more downside for the market. It's just trying to take advantage of stocks and the bear market rallies. They can provide some really nice returns because bear market rallies are ferocious, man. I mean, they, they rip to the upside. And so that's really what I've been trying to catch over the last couple of days. And, uh, Thankfully, I've only been doing it very lightly because the market won't confirm anything. Ben, L-I-C-Y. What is this? Life cycle? I've never even looked at this one before. Waste management. I mean, one thing is for sure. I mean, a bear market, you still got to have people picking up the trash. Um uh, So yeah, you, you do seem to have like a little bit of a bottom here that's forming across 650. Um, I actually don't even know what Lisi Lycycle does, L-I-C-Y. But it's really just in a basing pattern until it can break above this decline in trend line. So maybe like around 890 becomes much more bullish. But for now, it, it you could just be caught in like a little, it's going to you know suck up your capital and just hold it there and not do anything for a time period. Joe B, thank you, man. Appreciate that. And then uh, CMG for a short position. Joe B. All right, and we will wrap it up with this one too. So um, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely confirming that head and shoulders pattern. I think I've marked that up on, yeah, pretty much the same thing. So yeah, it confirmed it today. It broke below it. Uh, what was that? Like Thursday of last week? Yeah, Thursday of last week broke below, below but recaptured it to, uh, the following day. So it's going to be important for it to recapture that neckline. Sometimes these head and shoulder spirals, they can break just below it and then go on these crazy runs to the upside. So um, I do like it from a short side. Granted, I mean, you're you're shorting a market. Like if this market rise, it's going to probably rally CMG. Not guaranteed, but it's there's a good chance of it. So with us getting into oversold conditions, you want to make sure that you're not setting yourself up for a nasty short squeeze. Even if the charts are showing like impressive uh, patterns for or opportunities, you still want the uh, the market, the sectors, the industries, and the stocks all to line up um, as much as possible. So here's the thing, guys. That was brutal, man. And, and you're seeing, okay, firsthand, I've been doing it for 30 years looking at everything, everything I could get my hands on from a technical standpoint. Market was oversold. Market was uh, setting up. It was looking great for a bounce. And uh, like I said earlier, I was actually looking forward to today after yesterday's close. We're closing at the highs of the day across the board. And then you get an earnings report from Target. Like, 
And that that's probably the ones that you wouldn't think that would happen. I mean, that's like a staple. A lot of people got to go to Target. They got to go to Walmart and stuff like that. But it blew up. And so you can you can have the theories and you can have the explanations for why you think the market's going to do something. But when it doesn't do that, you also got to have a plan in place for why you for when you will get out when it's not working. And so I went into QQQ and I went into IWM expecting a bounce, but I also had a stop loss in place too. And when the market wasn't confirming those moves, I had to go ahead and get out, especially when the risk started to tilt too much against me. I went ahead and got out of them today. And uh, look, if the market bounces tomorrow or if it goes down a little bit and then starts to bounce, I can always get back in. Like it's, it doesn't hurt my ego. It doesn't hurt my pride to get back into a trade after I just got out of it. Um, and I've done it plenty of times. But I got to make sure above all else that I'm managing the risk because if you plan your trade, manage the risk, the profits will take care of themselves. So with that being said, make sure to pound the like button, subscribe to this channel and uh, keep supporting this channel, man. I really appreciate you guys. I love how you guys, I mean, so many of you guys come in every single Wednesday on these things and uh, I get nervous about them. I've never know like, oh man, it's like, especially like today, it's like, man, I look like a goon, you know, after, after those videos. But um, nonetheless, I mean, it, it helps me to be able to get in front of you and explain the videos in, in more depth and to, to provide like follow-ups on them and when it, things don't happen the way you expect them to. So with that said, thank you guys and God bless.